I say to Sam that we should um, adopt a child. Sam said to split up and come back with one of the many children in mind that we want. Uh, they do be grown men looking like teenagers. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. My name is Angel and we're going to read some fan fiction today. I... I found this story last night and I immediately, immediately, I knew this was going to be my next video. I briefly read through the first part of it. And let me just say, I think I have found a weird part of fan fiction. So let's just not wait any longer. I'm dying to read it. Let's just get right into it. As always, by me reading these stories, this is not me making fun of the author in any way, shape, or form. Um, I have never been a fan fiction girly, so this is me introducing myself um, to fan fiction and also sharing these great works with the world. All of the author information will be linked down in the description box below. And anybody that we read fan fiction about, do not go to any of their accounts. Do not go and interact with them in any kind of like inappropriate way. This is all fiction. I did not write any of this and I do not condone any of this. Now let's get into it. So, oh, I guess I should start by telling you the name. So this is called <laughs> Adopted by Sam Goldbach and Colby Brock. And this is by WDW-Sam and Colby. And this is part number one. Here we go. Our main girlie's name, she is already named in the story. Her name is Ava. And it starts with Ava's point of view. Hey, dipwad, wake up or I will wake you up myself, Mrs. Smith shouted from the door. I say okay and get out of my bed and get into this outfit. If you would like to see the outfit, the story is linked in the description box below. Feel free to click that link and go to the first part and see the outfit. Um, I walk out of my room to only get slapped by Mrs. Smith, but I don't even flinch because it's happened so many times before. I just focus on heading to the kitchen to do my chores when she stops me and says, how dare you walk away from me, you little blank, and slaps me again. I don't finish. I just say sorry and keep heading to the kitchen to start my chores. She walks off and I head to the kitchen to see that the garbage is so full. So I take it out and I put it in the trash can and walk back over to the intercom. Children ages 11 to 15 come into the adoption area. So I walk out of the kitchen and into the adoption area. And now we move on to Colby's POV. I say to Sam that... <laughs> I say to Sam that we should um, adopt a child and we can teach them to explore like we do. It'll be fun. Sam says, yeah, we should. I mean, all children who are not adopted by the age of 18 will be on their own for the rest of their lives. So I search adoption centers near me and the Sullivan Adoption Center comes up. So I show Sam and we go on the website and make an appointment for 11 o'clock and it was 1030. So we get dressed and eat. Then we are on the way down. It is 1050. Oh, I think they meant when they are done eating. It's now 1050. So we hop in my car and head over to the adoption center. Center. When we get there, it is 1056. I love the paper trail here. So we go to the door and ring the doorbell and then a woman opens up the door and leads us to the front desk to check us in when she asks us what type of age do we want to adopt. So I say 11 to 15 and she says over the intercom children 11 to 15 to the adoption area. Then we hear a lot of footsteps. Then the woman leads us to the adoption area and opens the door. We walk into a lot of children doing their own little things and she shuts the door. So Sam said to split up and come back with one of the many children in mind that we want. I don't think the person who read this story thought about how weird this might sound. Also, that was one long sentence. No shade. No shade. I don't know how old the person is who wrote this. No shade whatsoever. I nod my head and walk to one side of the room and Sam walks to the other side. And now we are back to Ava's POV. I walk into the room and so does everyone else in the group. And we do our own little things till Mrs. Smith opens the door and in walks two teenage looking guys. Uh, they do be grown men looking like teenagers. I go back to playing with my shoelaces when one of the kids starts to kick my feet to get me to pay attention to them. I look up and the kid slaps my face. Jesus Christ. Kids do be ruthless. I still don't flinch and she says that I won't get adopted, so go back to your room. I just go back to playing with my shoelaces and the kid leaves. 
Then I see another pair of shoes in front of me. I look up to see the blonde one that came in with the brown haired one. He kneels down to me to see him and introduces himself. Hello, my name is Samuel Goldbach, not Sam's government name, but you can call me Sam. What's your name? I say it's Ava Rockholt and I am 13. Well, it's nice to meet you, Ava. I will be right back. I just got to go tell my friend something. Sam says and gets up and walks away. Then I see a pair of shoes kicking me. So I look up and see that the kid who slapped me bends down. And then she whispers in my ear that I am nothing. And he only talked to you because he had to and then slapped me and ran away. I will assume I will know by the end of this if this is supposed to be satire or something. But I am genuinely confused on what's going on here. Now we move on to Sam's POV. Colby and I split up and I notice this little girl who is playing with her shoelaces. So I walk over to her and kneel down so she can see me and I introduce myself and ask her what her name is. She says her name is Ava Rockhold and she is 13. I say, well, nice to meet you, Ava. I will be right back. I just got to go tell my friend something. And I get up and walk to Colby, who is standing where we walked in. I said to Colby that I have someone in mind. And he says, so do I. So I said, on the count of three, we will tell each other which one they want. One, two, three, Gabriella. I, I think Colby says Gabriella. Sam says Ava. We look at each other in confusion on why we picked a different person. Did they not say that they were going to split up and meet the kids separately and pick their own favorite one? Why are they confused by their own plan? I'm confused by this whole plan, to be completely honest. Then he said, let's flip a coin. Heads for Gabriella and tails for Ava. I assume they are in the room with the children right now. As much as I would love to have um, Colby betting on me to go home with him, I am a grown adult. These are children. I'm just a little confused. I don't know what's going on. Oh, and I really don't like this next part. He said, let's flip a coin. Heads Gabriella and tails Ava. So I pull out my phone and say, Siri, flip a coin. I hope that does not trigger my Siri. She says tails. I say yes. Then I look at Colby and see him not happy that it landed tails. Oh my God, I can't. I, I can't handle this story. I say, hey, don't worry, bro. You'll like Ava. Colby just looks at me and says, okay. Then we walk over to Ava and say, hey, Ava, this is Colby pointing at him. She says, wait, why did I not notice this before? I heard you on the news that you won the Teen Choice Awards. Colby and I nod our heads. Yes. Then we say to go pack your stuff. We are wanting to take you home with us. I don't think that's ado how adoption works. You're not adopting a dog. You are adopting a full child. She smiles and gets up and walks out of the room. Then we see the woman come into the room. So we walk towards her. Then she asks, who do we want to adopt? And Colby says, Ava. The woman looks shocked. Then asks us if we were sure. I say, yes, we are. She says, well, who wants to sign her paperwork and who wants to be her guardian? Colby says him. Then I ask where Ava's room was. The lady said down the hall, door number five on your left. And then she and Colby left to do paperwork. Colby's POV. Sam and I walk to each other. These POVs are going to be really difficult to read, but this is the end of part one. So they're obviously short. Um, but I really don't think they need to like repeat the situation that like the other person just ended with. I, I think we get it. Once again, no shade. I tried writing a story once and it was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. And this one has eight parts. So go them. Anyways, Colby's POV. Sam and I walk to each other and say who we want to adopt. Then on the count of three. Okay, listen, if I read the rest of this, this, if I read the rest of Colby's POV right now, it is going to be an exact copy of uh, Sam's POV. So if there are any paragraphs like that, I'm just going to leave them out. However, I do encourage you to go read this story yourself. But I, for the sake of you, I'm going to skip those parts. Part two, Ava's POV. I walked to the room with a smile on my face when Hayden, who is 17, says, why are you smiling? and punches me, but I don't care. I am being adopted. I grab my duffel bag and start putting my clothes in there. Then my glasses case since I wear glasses. I hear a knock on my door. Weird. Nobody knocks on my door. I stop putting my clothes and shoes in when I answer the door. It was Sam. So I say, come in. He says, okay. <laughs> 
I love that these are just like all very long run-on sentences. I go back to putting my three pairs of shoes in my duffel bag when he asks me if this is all I have looking at my bag. I say yes and zip up my bag and put the strap over my shoulder and say, I am ready. He says, okay, and we walk out of my once bedroom with Sam. I shut my door and walk with Sam to the front room area and we see Colby. He asks me if I am all ready and I say yes and he says, well, let's go then. I say okay and we head out the door. They walk in front of me and I walk behind them when I feel someone hug me. I look to see it's Mrs. Smith. Girl, Mrs. Smith, you just slapped little Miss Ava at the beginning of the story. Uh, You're really trying to get your redemption arc here? No, ma'am. We are anti-Miss Smith. She whispers in my ear that they will get tired of you. I knew it was fake. She whispers in my ear that they will get tired of you. Don't worry. You will be back soon. I just loosen from her grip and walk out to Colby waiting for me. Colby's POV. I am done signing Ava's paperwork and the lady gives me Ava's file and we walk to the front desk area. I put the file in my jacket pocket. Okay, let me just take a second really quick. I am going to do a little bit of digging after on the reader because I have a feeling this is a child writing this. And I do want to make it very clear that I just think the structure of this story is very interesting. Personally, I don't believe I can just go online and make an appointment at an adoption center, pick out a child, and then leave with that child like that same day. Doesn't work like this at all. However, if this is a child that is writing this that like maybe is like in an abusive situation or something, um, I definitely want to be sensitive to that. I think I'm going to have to like finish this part of it, read the comments, do a little digging on uh, the author. And then we'll see if I can even post this video unless it's too controversial. I go on my phone and after about 10 minutes, I see Sam and Ava walking up to me. I ask Ava if she is all ready and she says yes. So I said, well, let's go then. She says, okay. And I and Sam walk in front of her so we can unlock my car. Then talk about how we are going to tell the roommates about Ava. They adopted a whole child without talking to their roommates. Okay. When we hear her stop walking, so Sam tells me to go see why she stopped, I say okay and walk over to Ava and notice the lady that helped us today is hugging her. So I tell Sam that the lady is hugging her, then Ava lets go and is walking towards me, so it's all good. He says okay and walks towards my car, and we walk over to my car, I unlock my car, and say to Ava that she can go in the back. She opens the back and goes in, and I shut her door, and Sam and I drive off. Ava's POV. I get in the car and put my seatbelt on. Then Sam and Colby get in and Colby starts the car and we leave the parking lot and start to drive down the road. As we pull out, Sam asks me how I ended up being in the orphanage. I don't think that's an appropriate question, Samuel Goldbach. So I say that my parents abused me and when I found out they were having another kid, they put me in the orphanage and I have been there ever since I was six. Genuinely hope this is not a true story because that is really sad. And there, there are a lot of stories that are like that unfortunately. Sam and Colby look at each other. Then Colby looks at the road to drive. Colby asked why I had so many bruises on parts of my face. So I say this is all from the orphanage. The lady who owns the center, Mrs. Smith, hated me and so did all of the older kids. So this is where all of them are from. Sam looked at me and said, well, how dare they do that to you as amazing as you are, Ava? I smile and say thank you and look out the window for the rest of the ride. Then Colby stops and says to look out from the middle of the back seat. So I do. The house is huge, I say, and come out of the car with my duffel bag around my shoulder. And Colby says, do you like it? I shake my head. Yes. And Sam said to me, well, we live here with a few other people, but now you get to live here too. I take off my duffel bag and run to Sam and hug him. Then I let go and I hug Colby. I let go of Colby and grab my duffel bag and we head into the front door as Sam opens it and we walk in. Then Colby shouts, we're back. And I see a t- another teenage looking guy with colored hair this time starts to walk towards us, then stops and sees me and says, hey, who's this? Pointing at me. Colby says, this is Ava. Sam and I adopted her today, Jake. Jake says, okay. <laughs> Why is that 100% how Jake would respond to I He would 100% be like, yeah, okay, cool. What's up? What's up, little dude? Jake says, okay, and walks to me and says, hey, Ava, why did you let those knuckleheads adopt you? I take it back. 
That would be his exact response. Pointing at Sam and Colby. I say, well, they picked me, so I really can't complain. And ask Sam if he is one of the roommates you guys live with. And he says yes. That is the end of part two. I'm going to go ahead and stop it there. I'm going to do a little bit of research. I'm going to come back at the end of this video. We'll talk about it and we'll see what's going on here. Okay. BRB. Okay. Um, oh my gosh. I literally hate splitting up my recordings. Like if I have to kind of like go do a little bit of research on something and then come back and record a separate part. Um, honestly could have kept that little segment rolling because I found the answer that I needed. Um, the first comment on the first part is from two weeks ago, actually. Why are they flipping coins over a child? The author then responded two weeks ago and said, it's an old book and I thought of the idea while I was in school. So this is completely 100% made up and has nothing to do with the author. So it does make me feel better reading it. So I am still going to um, end it there because uh, that kind of like was a lot. Um, I highly recommend you guys go click on the link just to kind of see how this story is kind of written. Um, she does address in her comment section that she understands it was not written in the best way. She first, this was like one of her first stories that um, she came out with three years ago, right? I think that's what she said. Yeah. So this was April 6th of 2020. Um, so I guess almost four years ago. So maybe we'll have to go and read this author's um, other works just to see how her writing has improved. Um, I always love looking at that kind of stuff. And then obviously we will definitely be finishing this story since she has said it is just a story she thought of while she was in school. I feel a little less bad uh, criticizing the idea of having Sam and Colby just randomly adopt a child and bring them into, I always want to call their house like the trap house or the hype house, but I know that is not correct, but uh, their little just gang house. Gang's not a good word either. You understand what I mean. Anyways, that is where I'm going to end today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you stayed until the end, um, like I always say in every single video, let me know what kind of stories or one shots or anything um, you guys want me to read or react to. Um, and I will see you in the next one.